And now let's figure out the Laplace transform of the function e to the at. And in my opinion, this is going to be one of the most useful one, and you will see why. So anyways, I will use the definition in this case though. So we will have the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative st, and we multiply by this, which is e to the at, and of course we have the dt right here. And now, if you look at this, both of them have e as the base. We can just combine the powers first and then integrate, right? Alright, so we will first write this as the limit as n goes to infinity, and now write this as integral from 0 to n, and let me just write down e right here, and as you can see, both of these exponents have t, and remember, when you do this times that, you add the exponents. Since they all have t, let me factor out the t right here and put it at the end, right? And we will have negative s plus a inside here, but let me write it down as a minus s, all right? So this is what we have, and of course we still have the dt, and now we will have the limit as n goes to infinity. To integrate e to the something, we first will have e to the same thing, right? So e to the a minus s times t. And then, what's the root of this with respect to t? It's just a minus s. We have to divide it by that. So we will have to put down 1 over a minus s. Okay, and then we go from 0 to n. Right? And usual deal, I will have to put down n into all the t, and then subtract, we plug on 0 into the t. So here we will have the limit as n goes to infinity, and we will have 1 over a minus s, and then this is e to the a minus s times t, which is the n right now. This is the first term, and then we subtract, plugging 0 in here, we will have 1 over a minus s, e to the a minus s, and t is the 0 here, so multiply by 0. And it's like this, right? Okay, so you know this is the easy part. This is the part that you have to kind of just talk about, right? Now, do it carefully. What do we want from here? We want this part, whenever e to the something and n goes to infinity, we want this part to be 0, right? How can we make this happen? Let's look at the exponents. You know n is infinity, right? It's going to infinity. I want to make sure that I have a negative infinity right here. So that means I want to make sure that this part we need to have a minus s to be less than 0, isn't it? Because if a minus s, this quantity here, is negative, then we have negative times infinity. e to the negative infinity will give us 0 times this part, everything will be 0. So the condition is a minus s has to be less than 0 right here, right? Right, so that's pretty much the usual deal. And as you can see, if you attach this condition at the end, you can say this is going to be 0, and we will have minus right here. This is 0 times that, which is just 0. e to 0 is just 1, and we just have this, 1 over a minus s, right? So, you will see, uh, we just have negative 1 over a minus s, but you know I can just switch the negative sign and also the subtraction, right? If you put a negative down in the denominator as this, you can have negative a times negative s, right? Negative a and the negative times negative s becomes past the s minus a. Anyways, fix that yourself, 1 over s minus a, right? Just distribute the negative sign and then you get this. Anyways, this right here will be the result, but be sure you attach this condition. The condition is that we wanted a minus s to be less than 0, and we can fix this a little bit, leaving minus a on both sides, so negative s is less than negative a, divide both sides by negative 1, so condition is s has to be greater than a, right? So this is the part that we need. 1 over s minus a, and the condition is s has to be greater than a. That's it.